Cabbage white butterflies are so common that many people don't think much about them at all, including myself, which is exactly why we're talking about them today on episode 84 of Insects for Fun. The species for today's butterfly is Pieris rapai, but the butterflies have a variety of common names depending on the country. That being said, all but one of them include the word white, because, well, these butterflies are always some shade of white. Here are some examples. Small white, small cabbage white, common white, and white butterfly. All very inspiring, I know. The common white, or as I call it, the cabbage white, belongs to a family of butterflies known as Pieridae. This is one of the smaller families and is home to around 1,100 species and 76 genera. The common name for this family is whites and sulfurs because most of them are white, yellow, or orange with black spots. Actually, the name butterfly is believed to have come from a member of this family known now as the common brimstone, species Genepteryx, Romney, which is a butter yellow in color. Cabbage whites can be found across the globe today, but they were originally only from a small Mediterranean region. The butterflies first spread to Asia following their host plants, which belonged to the cabbage and mustard family, and were accidentally introduced into Quebec, Canada around 1860. After their introduction, the species quickly took over most of North America, and even made its way to Hawaii before 1900. It's believed that one female is responsible for generations and millions of the cabbage white butterflies we can see today in North America. After taking over most of America and the southern half of Canada, the butterflies hitched a ride over to New Zealand and Australia around 1920. It's pretty easy for these to hitchhike because the caterpillars and eggs are very small, and their main source of food happens to be a commonplace vegetable that gets shipped a lot. These butterflies can be found fluttering in a variety of habitats from rural to suburban and even urban areas because of parks and gardens. They may be known for eating cabbage, but the caterpillars will munch on many plant species in the cabbage family or mustard family, which includes a lot of wild flowering plants like yellow cresses and yellow rockets. They're often the first butterflies we see in spring and the last to go in fall. And in some areas of the US, they can be found all year long. In Britain, these butterflies typically have two flight seasons, April to May and then July to August. And the butterflies seem to prefer more open areas as opposed to densely wooded forests. Early spring adult butterflies are smaller and have proportionately smaller spots on their wings than the later summer arrivals. Butterflies can emerge as early as March and stay as late as October in cooler parts of the world. I've seen quite a few cabbage whites these days in Osaka, among many other butterfly species. Adult butterflies feed on a variety of flowering host plants for their larvae, and have a preference for yellow, purple, and blue flowers over other colors. The females can identify which plants to lay eggs on by sensing for glucosinolates. These are natural products to mustard, cabbage, and radish plants, and are what gives them their pungent odor. But it's not just about how the plants look and smell. Female cabbage butterflies will also do a taste test by landing on the host plant. Remember that most of a butterfly's taste buds are on their feet. This makes determining the condition of a host plant as easy as landing on it for a brief period. This kind of plant analysis doesn't happen in females until after they've mated. Usually the females, like the males, will just check out flowers with attractive colors and then probe for nectar with their proboscis. This probing actually happens before they land most of the time and saves them the trouble of having to restart flight if the flower is empty or lacking. Female common white butterflies actually have two flight patterns when foraging. The first is sporadic, and this indicates that the butterflies aren't looking to lay eggs. The other flight pattern is linear, and the butterflies will just fly in a straight path. There is slight variation with species from different countries, but in general, this behavior is well documented and proven. It's also known that these butterflies, like the heliconias we mentioned before, stick to a common flight path and visit flowers they have previously gotten food from. Something I found which is pretty cool about laying eggs is that females choose how many eggs to lay depending on whether or not the host plant is alone or in a group of others. Female butterflies lay their eggs singly and will lay a much larger amount together if the plants are grouped together, which absolutely makes sense. 
This trait is believed to have come from exploiting their natural host plants in the Mediterranean. Something else I found pretty interesting is the mating behavior seen in cabbage whites. Male butterflies will patrol for females, but when the males find a female, they make zigzags up and down around her to show off their UV coloration, which we unfortunately can't see. Basically, the brighter he is to her, the more he has to offer in the form of a spermatophore, or nuptial package. If the female accepts, then they can pair, which results in them facing away from each other with joined abdomens. The male gives her a very large spermatophore, which takes up 13% of his body weight. That's like carrying around a 5-gallon jug, and the time it takes for females to break this down can last up to 36 hours or more. But it's designed to be like this because female cabbage whites mate multiple times in their life, and males naturally don't want that to happen because it lowers the odds of having their sperm get fertilized. So the spermatophore they give is not only large, but it's incredibly tough. He starts by inserting the hard shell, and then inflates it with nutritious ions and sperm until he's basically depleted. Female butterflies generally have a special pouch designed for this, called a bursa, which is honestly more like a stomach than anything else. And the cabbage whites have a special toothy structure inside called a signum, which breaks down this tough spermatophore. The sperm quickly swims away after it's been opened, and the bursa continues to digest and break down all the nutrients left behind. It's pretty wild, to say the least. So now that we've talked about the nitty gritty of what goes on after their mating dance, let's look at the eggs. These are incredibly small, but if you get a close picture, they look like corn cobs. Apparently, females do not lay eggs if the weather is bad because the eggs are easily lost from hard rain or strong winds. The eggs are usually oviposited on the underside of leaves, so they do at least have some protection after they've been firmly attached. The eggs take between 4 and 8 days to hatch depending on the weather and temperature. Warmer weather will speed this up, and then the caterpillars need another few weeks before they can make a chrysalis. The chrysalids are made under the leaf of the host plant and change colors as they get older. This is the life stage where the butterflies overwinter in colder climates. And white cabbage butterfly chrysalids can survive minus 20 Celsius, or minus 4 Fahrenheit. That being said, I'm sure they can survive much colder because we've had some brutal winters in northern Vermont, and yet they're always there when spring finally comes around. It's possible the chrysalids fall to the ground and get buried under leaf litter, which provides some insulation and heat as the leaves decompose. I've never actually seen a chrysalis for these though, or at least I can't ever recall being like, wow, I found a cabbage white chrysalis. So let me know if you've seen them in the comments for this episode. We've talked a lot about what these insects eat, but we haven't mentioned what eats them. The top predators for these are birds, like finches, skylarks, and sparrows. And of course, parasitoids, like braconid wasps and tachinid flies. Actually, these butterflies are well known as pests to farmers and gardeners, and Australia actually introduced a couple parasitoid wasps to lower their populations, one of which was also introduced in New Zealand at a later date. This wasp is a braconid called Cotesia rubicola. A lot of people also use pesticides or cover their crops with a fine mesh, which prevents the butterflies from laying eggs. I guess marigold is actually used as a deterrent, but if you want to play it real safe, I would just cover your leafy veggies in a fine mesh. On the flip side, some people like to raise them for fun, and it's pretty easy to do so. You just need to catch a few butterflies and put them in a mesh cage with some host flowers. If you want to ensure a pair, then you should net up two butterflies dancing around each other. The mating dance is pretty easy to notice, as it's always two butterflies flying very close. And that's gonna wrap up today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and as always, make sure to rate and review the show if you haven't on whatever platform you listen. It really makes a huge difference. You can also check out the Patreon for bonus episodes, ad-free episodes, vlogs, etc. Links for everything, including Instagram and Facebook, will be in the show notes. Thanks again for listening.